Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. As we enjoy this hobby of astrophotography, one of our favorite things a lot of times is um, nebula, deep sky objects. And a lot of times we're imaging those and we come across one like the Heart Nebula, the Soul Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, and our telescope's focal length is a little bit longer. And we run into the fact that, oh, if I wanna image this entire nebula, I have to take multiple sessions like and create a mosaic and plan out that mosaic, which is more work. So a lot of times we end up coming to the realization it'd be nice to have a shorter focal length telescope and then be able to take wide field images with that telescope. But you don't just wanna take wide field images, you wanna have high quality optics that lead to beautiful images of large nebula, right? And Williams Optics offers several versions of the popular RedCat series of PETS full refractors that are well suited for this. In this uh, review, I'm gonna show you nine different nebula targets I image with the RedCat 61. It has a focal length of 300 and a focal ratio of 4.9. It also comes with the internal focuser design. Hopefully this helps you decide, is the RedCat 61 the right telescope for you and your wide field imaging? This summer, I set up my observatory with the RedCat 61 telescope mounted on Skywatcher's EQ6R Pro mount in my observatory. Previously, I had been running the telescope on my iOptron Gem 28 mount set up on a tripod. That mount has some irregularities with consistent guiding I've never been able to work out, even after sending it back to iOptron. So doing this evaluation on the EQ6R Pro mount eliminates that whole sporadic guiding issue from the equation. So here's a quick look at my image train. I already mentioned the mount and the telescope. I also have ZWO's automatic focuser, ZWO seven position filter wheel, and the Optolong two inch filter set. I'm using ZWO's ASI 2600mm Pro camera and Williams Optics 32 millimeter Uniguide scope. And then also have a ZWO mini guide camera. So let's take a look at some of the results. In these imaging sessions, I use some common settings for all the targets. Uh, five minute exposures, narrowband filters, H-alpha, oxygen, and sulfur, 100 for gain and 100 for offset. I also use the same type of calibration frames, darks, flats, and flat darks. So first, let's look at the Wizard Nebula. This was imaged on August 9th and 11th. I captured a total of 7.2 hours of um, light subframes, and that was made up of 28 H-alpha, 30 oxygen, and 28 sulfur subframes. Second, let's look at the North American Nebula. This was imaged on August 13th. I captured a total of six and a half hours of light subframes, and that consisted of 27 H-alpha, 28 oxygen, and 25 sulfur subframes. Third, let's check out the Heart Nebula. This was imaged on August 14th. I captured a total of 2.25 hours of light frames. And this consisted of 12 H-alpha, nine oxygen, and six sulfur. Fourth, let's check out the Lagoon Nebula. This was imaged on August 14th. I captured a total of one and a half hours of light subframes. And this consisted of six H-alpha, six oxygen, and six sulfur. My fifth target was the Elephant Trunk Nebula. This was imaged on August 19th and 20th. I captured a total of 12 hours of light subframes, and this consisted of 48 H-alpha, 48 oxygen, and 48 sulfur. The sixth target was the Bubble Nebula. This was imaged on August 20th and 21st, and I captured a total of 11.3 hours of light subframes. This consisted of 53 H-alpha, 48 oxygen, and 40 sulfur. The seventh target was the Butterfly Nebula. This was imaged on August 25th and 26th, I captured a total of 11.8 hours of light subframes, and this was made up of 54 H-alpha, 53 oxygen, and 35 sulfur subframes. The eighth target was the Omega Nebula. This was imaged on September 4th and 7th, and I captured a total of uh, six hours of light frames. This consisted of 24 H-alpha, 24 oxygen, and 24 sulfur. The ninth target was the Horsehead Nebula, a favorite of many people. This was imaged on September 19th. I captured a total of 3.1 hours of light frames, and that was made up of uh, 15 H-alpha, 15 oxygen, and eight sulfur. So what do you think? Please post your comments about these examples of nebula. 
I captured with the Red Cat 61. Also, I want to acknowledge that the combination of this telescope and camera is what's considered undersampled. Here you can see what a common telescope uh, camera suitability calculator shows for this combination. Given the results I'm getting, do you think pairing the Red Cat 61 telescope with a different camera that has optimal sampling would be worth it? Would it make a significant difference in the quality of the final images? Please leave your comments. I'd like to hear your feedback. For example, the ZW OASI 294mm Pro in bin one mode offers a smaller pixel size and that results in what would be considered more optimal sampling. The same calculator shows this for that combination. The only negative I've seen in the threads about the 294mm Pro is it has amp glow. Most people say this amp glow can easily be removed with calibration frames. You know, the 2600mm Pro has zero amp glow, so that's kind of nice. But if you have the 294mm Pro, I'd like to hear your feedback. Are you able to get rid of that amp glow with your calibration frames, or is it still present an issue? If you're considering the Red Cat 61 telescope, I hope you found this video informative and it gives you a better idea of the images it can produce. I also have a product unboxing video on the Red Cat 61 on my channel. Check it out if you want to see more details. If you enjoy videos on amateur astronomy and astrophotography, subscribe to my channel. And for now, I'm wishing you clear skies.